Hello, 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 everyone. This is Shar. Just wanted to come back to you guys really quickly on this beautiful 4th of July, 2019. What a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Well, so much that's been going on as it relates to Nipsey Hussle, his family, and his business, the marathon. Um, his children, Imani, the baby, the baby mama, Tanisha Foster, as well as his family um, on the BET Awards most recently when um, Nipsey Hussle was being um, honored during that ceremony. Uh, just the um, the Crips LLC apologizing to Nipsey's family. It's just so much has transpired. So much to cover. Um, well, first, I want to congratulate Imani Askedome for graduating from elementary school. What a wonderful feat for her and a wonderful accomplishment for her. Um, I saw, I was able to see some of the footage, um, I don't know, that someone captured. I, I'm thinking it was the sister, Samantha, her aunt, um, that captured some of the footage um, from the graduation ceremony at the school where Imani was able to speak. And my goodness, she is um, really, really mature um, she's 10 years old I'm not sure when her birthday is she may be 10 and a half she may already be 11 I'm not exactly sure um, last I heard though she was 10 and she is amazing she can um, speak eloquently she can pronunciate she's assertive she captivates the attention of people um, she's just an eloquent speaker already and you can very much tell that her father had really groomed her and, um, you know, just really taught her about presence and confidence. And um, I believe it's a interview with um, Nipsey Hussle when he was being interviewed, I think, by a basketball player. Um, I can't think of the player's name. He's from um, Golden State, though. Um, you know the little player with the light-skinned kids and has the daughter that, I mean, the wife that is a cook also, Aisha Curry. Steph Curry, that's who it was. I believe he was being interviewed by Steph Curry, and he spoke, Nipsey spoke about, you know, the um, things that he was instilling in his daughter and the things that he was trying to teach her about confidence and assertiveness and being a leader and not a follower and all these things. And, 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 and when... She spoke at her graduation. You can really tell she's really picked up on so many things that he's tried to teach her. And so that's amazing. And I'm happy for her. Um, it didn't surprise me when I heard um, Imani thank her mother. Um, that was the first person that she thought her that she thanked was her mother. And it's no surprise because it's her mother and she loves her mother um on a real note does her mother have some issues yes does a lot of people have or do a lot of people have issues yes um facts do her mother or half uh, does her mother have to get some of these issues corrected or fixed most definitely <laughs> you know no if ands or buts about that but nevertheless her daughter loves her very very much and for anyone who doubted that um you know obviously you know now that you know no matter what's going on she loves her mother and she probably feels in the middle she's torn you know she loves her aunt but she she definitely loves her mom too so um and and in most kids they don't see the the negatives or the bad in their parents you know what i mean have you ever seen or you know saw a movie where a parent may be an alcoholic or addicted to drugs or something like that and those children they love the parent no matter what especially the mom 
you know, they'll go it, go through it with the mom, you know, knowing that she's sick. They consider it just being sick. You know, they don't look at it like, my mom's a mess and she's this and she's that. You know, they see, you know, their mom hurting. And so, um, any um, thoughts of um, Tanisha Foster is, is, is not even relevant to um, Imani. And um, she made that very clear. That was the very first person that she thanked at her graduation. And then she um, quickly thanked her father for um, a lot of things that he's helped her with and um, a couple of teachers. She didn't really say much about her aunt or her grandmother or anything like that. Um, you know, I believe that the little girl was really, really speaking from the heart and it's okay that she left certain people out. I don't think it was done purposely or maliciously. Um, I just truly, truly feel and believe that um, Imani is totally genu genuine. So that was amazing. Um, and then Nipsey's family uh, was at the BET, this year's BET Awards. Um, the BET Awards in a whole, as a whole, I thought was a little sketchy. I didn't really like it. I noticed some differences in the show this year. Um, it wasn't quite the way it normally what, the way I've normally seen the BET Awards. Um, I know the momentum is always different based on who's hosting. Um, this year they had Regina King. Um, she's okay. I like her, uh, you know, as an actress and, and everything. She's just, she's okay. She's, I do not like her. I don't super love her, but she's just okay. And, um, you know, the little sticks that she was doing during the um, show and in between the show was okay. You know, it probably could have been a lot better, but it's just okay. You know, um, I feel that they left uh, honoring or tributing um, that director um, that did Boys in the Hood. I can't think of his name. John Singleton, that's his name. They could have uh, threw in a tribute to him quickly in between the show, maybe 86th, one of her sketches, you know. Because, you know, they weren't that great. You know what I mean? Like, everyone would have been okay if she didn't do one of the um, little sketches. I think the best one is when she um, had 50 talking about, you know, she owed him money. <laughs> that might have been the best one. But other than that, you know, they could have uh, got a, someone to speak on John Singleton and his um, legacy and threw a couple of pictures up there really quickly and, and you know, been done with that. I think that would have been um, really effective, but somehow they left him out. And the best part of the show was um, basically um, Mary J. Blige, I feel. Her show was amazing. Um Mary J, you know, she's never been just a drip drop singer. You know, she's never been like a Mariah Carey or a Whitney Houston or anything. So her vocals was to be expected. I, you know, heard a lot of people saying her vocals wasn't all that. Well, Mary J Blige's vocals have never been 100%. You know what I mean? That's just the nature of her style. And that's just how her voice is. And, you know... She pretty much works with what she has to work with as it relates to her vocals. And I think she did a great job. It felt like a baby concert, and I loved it. Um, little Kim's performance was great. Um, I loved when Method Man came out with her. I thought it was great. Nipsey Hussle's tribute was, um, it was good. Um, I liked the choir. It was really, really heartfelt. Um, anytime you throw a choir in something, it, it's always going to feel um, heartfelt. However, I do wish that they had more of Nipsey's real friends that spoke about him on the um, personal clips that they showed. I mean, they had a lot of industry people. I uh, can't think of um, that um, director's name the lady with the um, whole locks. I can't think of her name. I want to say her last name is Duvet or Divinay or something like that. 
um, you know, people like her. I mean, she's great. And, you know, obviously she's um, met Nipsey, was acquainted with Nipsey at some point. But, you know, they could have had his, like, real friends that he came up with. Uh, the ones that are still obviously alive and around. Not all of them, but, you know, they could have had a couple, at least two. You know, I would have been even happy with, you know, one or two from his neighborhood or something that really, really knew him that could have really gave us two, three minutes of, you know, core um, Nipsey memory or history. You know what I mean? But they had a, quite a few industry people, and I just thought that was just trying to be politically correct or something. I don't know. But um, the music, music portion was great. Um, Nipsey Hussle's family came on stage. They spoke. Um, Lauren London kept it to a minimum. She did indicate that the marathon will continue with emphasis on will, um, obviously because of the issues that were going on with the trademarking of the marathon continues slogan. Um, the grandmother, I, I, I shed a tear or two because she is she was most definitely heartfelt she was most definitely genuine and you know you just heard a grandmother um hurt by the passing of her grandson so that that made me cry you know um the sister she doesn't say much publicly she was um holding um i think lauren london's son imani was on stage as well um, the mother, you know, mother, um, I believe her last name is Smith, um, Angelique Smith. She's, um, different and, um, clearly, clearly she's a real, real spiritual woman. Very, very spiritual. Um, I don't know about religious, but very spiritual. And I'm not going to speak too much on what she was saying in terms of what my opinion is because I'm not really spiritual. So I can't say anything negative about that woman and her spirituality. You know what I mean? It's over my head. Um, things are real to her as she sees it and because of her spirituality. And when, when, when you're not spiritual in that way or in tune with those types of um, beliefs um, then you're not going to understand it and it is going to be a little left field and it's going to be a little weird for you so I'm not going to even you know comment on it because like I said she's spiritual and these are her beliefs and um, you know what she said and share it with everyone is how she feels, her, you know, gut feelings. And that is to be respected um, as it relates to the feelings about her son and what happened to him. Um, I know the media, a lot of people on the Internet and think viewers, they, they, they was basically, you know, saying she was weird and, you know, whatever, whatever. And I'm not going to do that. Um Clearly, she feels that her son was assassinated uh, because she made no doubt about that. She she emphatically said that. She used that word. And um, I don't know. A lot of people felt that way anyway. But now it's confirmed that his family, or at least the mother, feels that way as well. She literally feels that he was assassinated. So that was interesting for her um, to hear her say that on the BET Awards. Um, and then his father spoke. His father, um, very humble man. And um, he gave his, uh, I feel like he gave his true thoughts and feelings too. Um, so yeah. Um, it's just sad that, you know, he was so young and they're up there accepting awards on his behalf. It's, it's really messed up, but... Um, and then on to the LLC Crips. Um, I don't know. I don't know what made them have a second thought or turn the other cheek or bow out 
or you know whatever you want to call it um but they have they've withdrawn or have withdrew their um, petition to um, patent the name the marathon continues um black sam nipsey's brother um also filed a petition which was a few days after um the crips llc did um it makes me wonder was that even something that sam was even going to do you know because it was done after the fact i don't know he he had so much going on and so much on his mind you know i don't know if it was just on his to-do list and he just hadn't gotten around to doing it or if he just you know found out that the crips llc filed and was like oh well you know let me go down here and file as well you know because more than likely you know i felt like who would want to use that i mean that's clearly nipsey's thing this man has been talking about the marathon since 2010 or probably even before that you know i don't know that much history about nipsey in his career but um i know i have since his death i've been listening to his lot of a lot of his music and it hasn't you know i've been listening to other music outside of the victory lap album and you know if you listen to his music he's been literally talking about the marathon and the marathon continues and all money in and all that for years years and years and years and years you know probably all the way back to 2009 um and maybe even before then like i said you know i haven't been listening to that much of the old music but you know, I know for sure at least 2009, 2010, he's been talking about this marathon and it's continuing and all that. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, and before he died, he was always repping the marathon and victory and victory lap and all these things. That's who he is and what he stands for and what he believes in. And he was always speaking it. So for someone to just go and just capitalize on that, clearly you can say it's a business thing but yeah it is a business thing and you know what type of business you're gonna get from it using that slogan you know you're gonna always get a lot of attention and you're always going to get a lot of business because it's a popular slogan at this point um he made it popular and then you know lauren london just solidified it when she mentioned it at his memorial so you know it was underhanded because they didn't go to the family initially. They didn't speak to Black Sam or, you know, anyone in his family. So, to me, that seems like it was underhanded. And God only knows why they withdrew. It was probably because it was getting so much backlash, uh, made to look as if they were being dirty and probably, like, made to making people think they had something to do with um, his quote-unquote assassination according to Nipsey's mom um and hell who knows people in LA you know they may have even heard like we ain't gonna participate or um patronize patronize anything that got to do with the Crips LLC marathon continues I know I'm not you know that may have been what they had been hearing too so it may not have anything to do with them just having a heart and saying, no, I'm, we're going to withdraw. It may have something to do with their public opinion and the public speaking saying, we're not going to have anything to do with any um, shows or products or materials that they're going to be, you know, merchandising with this Marathon Continue slogan. We're not buying it, literally. So, um, with a negative tone, negative momentum going on as it relates to them having the um, slogan, they might have felt like, Psh, we're not going to win. We're not going to make any money because it's a negative connotation out there about it. So, let's just withdraw. 
So it, it may not even have anything to do with them feeling like they, you know, did a disjustice to Nipsey's family. It may have something to do with the fact that because they're being looked upon as negative for even doing it in the first place, now they feel that they're not even going to make any money or the type of money that they wanted to make, you know, because it's just been, um, you know, looked upon as a negative thing. So, um, nevertheless, they have withdrew, and so now Black Sam's application for the marathon continue can, um, can you know, go ahead and be processed. And um, so that's a win for them. That's a win for the family. And um, one thing he doesn't have to worry about now, and I know he's happy about that, whatever the reason is. Um, and then they made a public apology. You know, they um, contacted um, a publication. I think it was The Blast where the article was located where they discussed um, the apology that they've made to Nipsey Hussle. So they made that public. They made the apology public. And, but they did not contact Nipsey's family initially to um, find out their thoughts or feelings on the Crips LLC um, petitioning for the Marathon Continues slogan in the first place. So, interesting. It looks a little effed up. But. Um, and then next, I want to um, quickly talk about Miss China Hustle. Um um, I think the last time I spoke, I did a video, she had, um, went off on Lauren London, uh, because she was responding to a fan page that wasn't even Lauren London's actual page. So now, um, based on some YouTubers that I follow, I've noticed through their um, commentary and through their pictures that um, she's got a clue. Like, someone has put her up on game. I don't know if it's been the YouTubers and their commentaries and their stories. I don't know if it's been family members. I don't know if it's been her friends. I don't know if it's been some of her male friends that she keep. But somebody has put her up on game, and she has taken down so many so so many pictures that was just uh, giving a negative connotation or negative vibe um, to her and her personality she's taking them down the picture of the lean she's taking it down the pictures of the pills she's taking it down the pictures of the Hennessy bottles she's taking it down just the picture of all these different men that she's you know dated or have some dealings with over the years she's taking them down she's taking them off her ig as she should have she's taken the picture of eric holder or who um a lot of the public allegedly thought was eric holder she's taken it down and good for her she should have been taking those pictures down because like i said it was just giving just a negative um, image of her. And she's replaced all those pictures with many, 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 many pictures of her daughter, Imani. Not her other children, not her oldest daughter, not her son, but Imani. Her and Imani, um, Imani and Nipsey, her, Imani and Nipsey, and just Imani by herself. Imani, Imani, Imani. She has posted so many pictures of this little girl at different times, um, graduating, I think, from kindergarten, it looks like. Um, her and Imani just looks like it was mommy-daughter time, just having a mommy-daughter moment, cheek-to-cheek. A um, couple of other pictures of her, um, I guess her thinking she feels like she's looking cute in a car. I think one she mentioned she was at the studio or however she worded it. It was like she hinted around that she was at a studio. And I think she said with her BM. Um, which I believe stands for Baby Daddy. And I think the picture was from 2013. So, um, yeah. 
I think she did have a picture of her older daughter. One, one picture of her older daughter, I believe. So yeah, she's replaced all those negative pictures with some positive pictures. So good for her on that. Um, she should have been did it because the, basically now, because she's taken so long to remove those pictures, so many um, YouTubers and things like that have they have records of the pictures and all that, you know. So <laughs> they're on the internet forever and ever and ever. So whatever. But um, yeah. Um, as far as the documents that's been released by the LAPD as it relates to Nipsey's case, it is a mess. I'm sure all of you have heard. Um, it's just a lot. They say it's um, some odd 500 pages of um, documents speaking on this case. Um, the bottom line is the driver, that lady, that girl, whoever she is, She's um, asking for protection. She's fearing for her life. Um, and she gave that shocking testimony that it was shocking to everybody that she was turned away when she went to the police station. Like, turned away? Like, who turns someone away when they're, you know, admitting to a crime or admitting to knowing something about a crime? You know, um, I'm not quite sure, and I'm sure whoever's listening, they may know. I'm not quite sure when she went in, had they actually captured um, Eric Holder at the time, or was it sometime thereafter. Either way, the shooting had happened. By this time, Nipsey Hussle had already been pronounced dead. So, it's absolutely no way in heck you going to tell me that the officers didn't know anything about this case or heard something about it, even if they weren't, you know, a part of it. They hadn't been working the case. They know. You know what I mean? Nipsey Hussle was a public figure. He was well known. That situation was a big deal. It had just happened. They knew. So why would you turn anybody away that's coming in and saying they know something about something? You wouldn't turn those per those people away. If anything, you'll come in and have her sit down and get statements, record her, or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? But she was turned away. And she also advised that they told her, don't worry about it and don't look at the news. That's crazy. <sighs> That's really crazy. But, um, yeah, some other shocking news is that she uh, indicated that she heard a lot of stuff. And she indicated that she heard a lot of stuff by saying what was being said about the snitching. She heard this, she heard that. Well, how could she hear if she around the little corner in the alley part of the marathon? I mean, it's a strip mall. She wasn't in that main parking lot. We all know that because it's the, the footage that was made viral. We saw all the cars that was in the parking lot in the front you know the audi the white car you know all these cars that we knew we didn't know if anyone was in them or who was in them and but clearly we know that certain people were in certain cars because there are certain video you know that was made public that somebody was in some of them cars you know what i mean but we didn't see a white Chevy Cruze in the parking lot. So she wasn't in the main parking lot. So how the hell did she hear anything? So that was weird. The thing is, she clearly she must be lying when she says she didn't really know what was going on or what was about to go on. You sat up here and said you heard this and heard that. You, you know when there's a beef that could happen. You know he just got out of jail not too long ago. You know who Nipsey is. You know who what he was a part of. You know what um, Eric Holder was a part of. So if they're talking about snitching, then you already know that's negative And that could be, you know, a potential argument or a fight or a shootout. You know what I mean? So if never, if she didn't know at that point pulling up she knew when he came back when he came with the two guns or with one of them loading them 
and saying drive. I mean, unloading them or putting them away or whatever he was doing, talking about drive. You know, as to say, drive, drive, get away, get away. You know what I mean? So, yeah. She, she's she lying, but hopefully they'll figure it all out, whatever. This is just a real live mess and some real live lying going on. So hopefully, hopefully they can get it all squared away. I mean, hopefully the truth will prevail and hopefully that Nipsey... And his family will actually get real justice. So let's all pray that this man really gets the justice that he deserves. There's so many what ifs and why did this happen and all these different people. And it's just, ugh, I hate cases like this because it's just so many variables. You know what I mean? These lawyers that um, prosecution for the state of California, they they got a they got a job on their hands. They really do, because there's so many variables, so many things to cover to make sure that they're crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's and not leaving anything or anyone out. You know what I mean? So they they have to cover everything and um that's going to be a every day all night all day long process from here to the trial in order for them to be you know on total point on 100 so let's just hope and pray for the best and um i just wanted to come to you guys really quick and just give my commentary about all these things that have transpired um Hopefully, we won't hear too much more shocking news, but I'm almost sure we will. It's just a matter of time as things continue to be made public. As I stated early on, this is the 4th of July, so um, let's just try to enjoy our holidays with our friends and our families and be safe, people. Later. <laughs>